Welcome to the Massage Hodge podcast. My name is Nick Paterka, a licensed massage therapist in Portland, Oregon. I am joined today by Sarah Newberry, a fellow licensed massage therapist from the state of Missouri. Hello and welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. So great to have you. You are the 25th interview in an ongoing effort to interview a fellow therapist from all 50 states. So uh, I'm just moving right along here. I, I think I may I may take a little break from the state thing for a little while, but I'm so glad that we can have the opportunity to talk about Missouri. Now, before we before we jump into some things, you are a licensed massage therapist like myself. Your practice is called Somatic Soul Barefoot Massage. You are yeah. also an educator of Ashiatsu. Mm -hmm. specifically right at Midwest yeah. Massage Training Center and then you yeah. also do like consulting for people in their businesses yes 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 sounds busy and you have three children I do holy yeah. smokes <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna guess you get little sleep maybe yeah yeah there's <laughs> there's little time for anything else besides kid related things and the yeah. stuff related things what are your kids age gaps What's the um, six, three, and almost five months? Oh, <laughs> oh man, my heart goes out to you. I only have two kids, and they're six and eight now. They they take care of themselves a lot of the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Much different. Yeah, right. Right after um, we had Juniper, my youngest, the world closed. Wow. Down. Wow. She doesn't really know much else than social distancing. <laughs> Holy smokes. That's, that's, in, that's intense. It sounds like. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, okay. So before we talk about Missouri specifically, could you give me a little origin story as to how you became a massage therapist in the first place? And then maybe continue the story on to tell us how you got into Ashiatsu. Yeah, briefly. Um, I have been doing massage or I, I kind of stumbled into massage. I was experiencing a lot of TMJ pain as a child, as a young person. Um, and I was also a dancer doing ballet and, and things like that. And so my mom put me into receiving massage as even as young as high school. Um, to kind Bravo, of help. mom, that is an yeah, unbelievable right? story. Yeah. I, I know, right? I feel very blessed that she was that progressive. Um, and so that's kind of my starting experience with receiving massage. And then I was in school for psychology and I was kind of like, I don't know what I'm doing in the world. Like I'm going to take a year off. And, um, my, my dad got really sick. And so I went to take care of him. And then my best friend at the time was like, Hey, I'm going to massage school. Like you want to come check it out? And I was like, sure. Why not? I'm not doing anything else. <laughs> so, uh, lo and behold, that's how I ended up in massage school. She actually, um, is still my, one of my best friends and we live in different States. She lives in Illinois. That's where I'm from. And we moved to Missouri. Or, well, I moved to Missouri to go to school and she would commute. So, um, I then got a job at the school I went to, and then I just like dove straight in, immersed myself in massage from that point on. And that was like in 2007. So I've been somehow affiliated with the field since then. Um, and then with barefoot massage, I was just, it was kind of like rumored at the school I went to, like there was this thing you could do with your feet. And I was like, what's that? That sounds really cool. And then um, I was working with this chiropractor and they moved their business into this super tiny room, like super duper tiny, like you shouldn't be doing massage in. Mm. So I was like, okay, here's my chance. I'm going to go do barefoot massage. I'm going to learn it. And cause this is the only room I'm going to have to do massages on yeah. top of the table. <laughs> and, uh, that was in, uh, 2011 and mm. that's, I like learned it, loved it, never looked back. Wow. That's, that's yeah. great. Now, so there's one thing yeah. you mentioned about that origin that is so interesting and vital to me is that that your mom in introduced you as an option. Like, I, I really want that to become more of a thing. I want more parents mm -hmm. taking their kids, not to like give them a fancy fun day at the spa, but to say like, this is a way that as you get older, you can take care of yourself. Like, 
this is an intervention you should know about. I didn't know about massage yeah. until I was an adult. Like it didn't occur to me that right. when I was pain, I could go do that. Well, and I, I was really super lucky too, because I grew up in a super tiny town where there was like maybe one massage therapist there, you know? So oh. how my mom even knew to like go that direction is kind of interesting. Like, I don't know how that happened. She knew this woman who was like an older lady, like, like the same age as my mom. And I guess they were talking and my daughter's experiencing this or something like that. And she was like, you should have her come see me. So there it was she kind of by chance. Now you were you saying TM, <laughs> TMJ pain. Is that, yeah, that's gotta be the one place you can't really use Ashiatsu for, right? Right. Right. <laughs> but you know, TMJ, TMJ pains, like it's, for me, it was originating a lot of forward head posture. So uh, as you know, that's like a lot more things than just for sure. TMJ. Yeah. 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 I was just, I was just imagining feet on the face for a second. I don't know why, but <laughs> yeah. That's kind of okay. Enough. So let's jump over to, um, <laughs> let's jump over to Missouri. What does it take to get a license in the state of Missouri and to maintain a license in the state of Missouri? So Missouri is super frustrating, um, because it's very lackadaisical. We do mm -hmm. have licensing. We're not one of these like rogue states that has no licensing, but it's really simple. And, um, it's something like 500 hours. So really minimal. Okay. The school I went to was 650 hours, so there's a little bit more. Um, and then there's no requirements that I am aware of, of like specific education. Like I, I do think that they prefer you to have like a certain amount of hours in anatomy and a certain amount of hours mm. in, um, you know, technique. And I know that there is a certain amount of hours in like working with the public supervised. Okay. Um, so that's where we had like clinics, you know, student clinics. Yeah. Um, and then it's to renew your license. It's every two years. It's on the odd year that you have to renew. And it's um, 12 hours of continuing education. Okay. Honestly, this sounds perfectly average uh, yeah. as for all the states I've talked to. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not like um, it. I think that it's frustrating because it's really hard to get a hold of anyone there. So if you have any questions or wow. any issues, it's like you can't get a hold of anybody. The law is the laws are written in such a way that uh, it's vague enough for wiggle room, and it's mm -hmm. not super duper clear a lot of times. Yeah. Um, so it's, I'm guessing, it's, like a lot of state boards, they took a frustratingly hands off approach to the yeah crisis. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. So speaking of which, so we're still in the midst of it in a lot of ways. Um, places are, are reopening. So could you just g give us a, a sense of, from your perspective, how coronavirus impacted your community and your state and where it stands right now? Yeah. Um, so again, this is a very, we're a very red state. I mean, I would, I hate to make it political, but like at the end of the day, that's really what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, and so they're very, the governor has made a stance of being very concerned about the economy. Mm -hmm. So he's been very much like, let's just open the doors, like everybody open and see what happens. And mm -hmm. so uh, massage has been available, um, I think since like, or like in May at some point. Um, and we didn't really do much of a phase opening either. It was just kind of like, oh. okay, now we're open. <laughs> like for, is that true across industry? Like restaurants yeah. just went back to business as usual or, well, or they, they probably have to stay certain distance? Yeah, I actually, yeah. I actually do think that it was um, for restaurants and even um, retail stores, it was, they had to limit to 25% capacity okay. um, for a couple of weeks which I don't really know what that is going to do if you open everything else as well, but that's what they did. So well, also like a restaurant can't survive at 25% capacity. Exactly. They're, the overheads in that industry are like so narrow or the, the profit margins I should say are so narrow yes. that like yes. eventually the, I mean, there's already it's the list of restaurants that have just closed permanently in Portland is so long. It's so sad to watch. Oh yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. So, okay, so 
so you could reopen, but it, I think you mentioned before we started recording that you're not doing that yet, just yes. out of a, your personal approach to it. Yes. Um, there are places in my city and in my state that are open. Um, we are choosing to remain closed. And in fact, we've negotiated out of our lease and all of our stuff is in storage. Oh, wow. So we are, we are closed for a while. Okay. And you're look, you're going, once you feel comfortable, you'll start looking for a new Mm -hmm. space. Correct. At which time you might at least have the benefit of getting a better deal. Yeah. Maybe there's going to be a lot of vacancies. It's so, it's so up in the air and I feel I feel this way and I know a lot of people have been feeling this way too, that I, it depends on the day on how I feel about it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, today I woke up and I was like freaked out about it all. And I was like, okay, I don't, I don't even want to go to the grocery store today. You know, like that's Mm -hmm. how I felt today. Whereas yesterday I was kind of like, well, you know, I think things are kind of moving in a good direction. Yeah. (laughs) You know? (laughs) Yeah. Um, And I know I've heard from a lot of people that they feel similarly that, you know, it's just from a day-to-day kind of looking at the numbers, looking at the data, looking at research to see what the right choice is. Yeah. um, My county here in Portland only recently reactivated and I've sort of have dipped my toe in and I, I have very few people coming through the door and I'm just really trying to get my bearings straight and like work out these processes and like, I've gone to full hours in between and it's just, it's a lot. And I'm just trying to like get it all down. I also only opened in January right before the crisis. Oh, Oh, yeah. So I don't have this. I would imagine because your practice has been around. So I would imagine you, you have a lot of people who are sad to not know when you're coming back and you'll probably kind of have to start fresh when you do get back because those clients may go somewhere else. Yes. Yeah. Um, I have very much taken the stance of being a leader as, as an educator. And, um, this is a moral thing for me personally. And I feel, I feel like if I can't, um, I can't very well educate my other therapists, my students and say things like, you know, you should be doing this, 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 and this, and then do something different myself. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's, it's very much like I, I want to take the moral high ground and the like very, um, what am I, what's the word I want to say? Like, um, the, like the most conservative approach to the health side. I want to be an integrity, you know, I want to, I want to like, really do what I say and say what I do. And, um, whenever, and whenever it comes to that, it really comes down to like, it's not appropriate for us to be doing massage. We don't know enough yet about all of this to be open. And it would be different. I think it would be different if I didn't have students or if I didn't have a staff to think about or, um, the clients that we work with, you know? So I do think that it's every person has to make their own individual decision. Um, Yeah. I could imagine if I, if I had more, like, it's just me in my space. And if there, if there was even just one other practitioner with me, I would have a much different sort of mindset around it. Yeah. Yeah. Very personal. And it, it just, it, it frustrates me when I see that divisive, like we, like I can be open, you can be closed and we can have a really nice you know, conversation, understanding about it, but there's other places where it's just like, that's not the case. Yeah. That's the saddest part, right? That's the part that, um, there's an opportunity for us to come together and it seems like instead we've been kind of fighting with each other and that's hard. (laughs) (laughs) It's, uh, yeah. Some of the, some of the groups have gotten a little, a little heated here and there. But I suppose they always have in their way. They always have. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Well, okay. So it sounds like you're carrying on. What, what, how did you occupy yourself? I mean, it sounds like you had a lot of work to do around closing down and getting out of the lease, but, Mm -hmm. and managing three kids. I guess I don't need to ask you this question. Your life seems. (laughs) Yeah. But you know, there, I could talk about that in a way though, because there was, um, I'm very involved in the women's business community in my, in my neighbor or in my community too, you know, like they're women owned businesses and 
we all kind of were like, what do we do here? You know, what's the pivot? What are we like, how are we changing to accommodate this new thing? And, you know, it's so new. We're all kind of learning it together. Um, so there was at first in me, this push to be like, okay, well, we're just rolling with it. We're like going to change and we're going to do things online and we're going to just, we're going to pivot. And it was like hard, a hard pivot. We'll just put everything online. It'll be fine. And then as things kind of unraveled and things, we, we got more data and we got more information and it was like, man, I don't know if online, like the push to do everything online and the push to do everything, pivot and do it differently. It was kind of like, no, we might need to just pause, like mm-hmm. really pause and kind of um, wait to see what comes of this because you know, we could look at the numbers and were people paying attention to what we were doing online and were people wanting that. And when it comes down to it, it's like people want to be touched and people want to be, they, you know, they want, they want a massage. (laughs) Early on, I felt this impulse to like create some virtual thing. And I was listening to other podcasts about creating virtual appointments. And I was like, it's just not what I do. Like that's, yeah. It's a totally different thing. And I I didn't imagine any of my client my clients that I had had would be interested in that. So I would have to go find a whole new audience for that, which I if it yeah. goes on long enough, I may may have to. But I mean if a, if a, another full lockdown Maybe. comes along. Well, and for for us, you know, I mean we we had a lot of clients because we've been open for a long time. Yeah. And um I think that I've been doing virtual appointments and it's totally rad. It's like a new, it's like a new neural pathway for my brain to think about things in a different way. And that's Mm. really cool, but it's really great for some of the clients and it's really not great for some of the clients. And Mm. so I like being able to have it as an option, but I have learned really quickly that it's not, it's not, it's just not for everyone. Just like it's not for every therapist to offer that either. Right. Can you just give me a little sense of what it looks like? Is it just you guiding them through some sort of self care? Um, I mean, how does it How does it look? I wish that I had better words too, because I know it's more of like a mindfulness, and it's more of getting them to be in their body in a safe way. Because I've also been very interested in trauma informed care, mm-hmm. so I don't want to bring clients into their body in a way that's like triggering, Mm -hmm. um, you know, for like domestic violence or sexual assault or something like that. I would never want to do that. So bringing them into their body in like a very careful and meticulous way that doesn't bring up some other stuff, you know? Um, so a lot of it is just, you know, what I've been telling my clients is it's a lot of like going to, why do you go to a personal trainer? You know, you go to a personal trainer for the accountability to Mm -hmm. make sure you're doing the self-care stuff, making sure that you're doing the breathing or whatever it is that you do. And so that's Mm -hmm. kind of what I, I spend a lot of time talking to them about like what's working, what's not working. Okay. So this is how this works. When are you doing this? And then I, you know, I make a little note, like follow Mm. up with them on that. And then that's what we talk about the next time. Okay. So did you do this activity? Blah, 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 whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's so, I think that would be really valuable for some people. And yeah, but at the end of the day, some people just need that hands-on connection. Yeah. 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 And I was even going to do some courses because I do a partner massage class in person. So I was like, well, I could do this online or even do some Zoom calls with couples who are stuck in quarantine together. Yeah. But, um, you know, there was a little bit of interest, but not, and this is, you know, having three kids being stuck at home, you really have to weigh like what is worth your time. Right. You know? And so I had to really ask myself like, okay, if there's a little bit of interest, that's one thing. If there's a lot of interest, that's a whole other thing, you know? And so it was kind of a lot of weighing that. Yeah, I could see that that might be better if you could maybe find a way to be like teaching five couples at once. Yeah. 
But then yeah, again, yeah. maybe people would want the the sort of very direct feedback of that one on one. Yeah. Yeah. I maybe mean, I don't know two different offerings. Yet. I've thought a little bit about. I, I'm sure you hear it all the time too. The the whole like when you once you're a, a massage therapist, people always come to you. And they, Can you teach my partner to give me a better back yeah. rub? Like it's like yeah, one of the number one things we hear. I'm like yeah. Good. Well, okay. So, and just as an educator of people of of massage therapists and of the community in massage, and having my own partner, <laughs> I'll tell you that teaching people to massage not professionally is really hard Yeah, because you only have them for maybe an hour, maybe an hour and a half. And you, you've got to be like, you're just trying to make sure that they don't hurt each other. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like that's sort of what it it makes a lot of sense. like, you know, okay. You're taught, you're teaching soft skills, like rapport, like, okay, t- check in. What does this feel like to your partner? You know, you don't want to hurt them. Blah, blah, blah. What feels good to you might not feel good to them. So and you probably, and you have to really be conscious about the jargon that you use. Like you can't talk about the TFL and the, the yeah. Rectifine group. You know, you have to like really, yeah. yeah. I, I hate to say dumb it down, but dumb it down. Yeah, for sure. For yeah. sure. So if you could back, back your mind up a little bit and take a look at the massage therapy industry, how do you think just as a whole, we're co- going to come out of this crisis? What changes do you see or what changes do you fear or hope for? Any any of those angles? Well, I have a lot of opinions about the massage industry. Um, and I have that's part of the reason why I started teaching and getting involved in the legislation of, of educating because I felt like there was a lot of things that could have been done better. Do you hear my dog I heard it? something. I thought it was maybe me for a second. <laughs> my my dog is really old and he's going to get groomed on Saturday and so he's got long nails and he's tapping along. Oh, on my that's what that is. <laughs> I'm gonna need my kids are up to something over here. Okay. That's funny. No, yeah. we're good. We're good. <laughs> um, so yeah, I have a lot of opinions about the massage industry, what we could be doing better, which we could do a whole podcast on that. So I'll keep it brief. But I do think that there is some really beautiful things emerging from this industry. Now, the unfortunate thing is, I think a lot of the people who are smart and making good choices are leaving, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and understandably so, right? They're leaving because they see that this is not going away anytime soon. Um, I think that as long as those people who are kind of taking a step back, like myself and others, um, as long as we still stay engaged and, um, engaged in other ways, you know, maybe this is the time we start, uh, really developing better legislation across the board, whether it's Mm. in your state or in the national board or the FST and whatever alphabet soup you want to, you know, get involved with. Um, now's the time for that. So I understand that people need money and maybe they get other jobs or they retire or whatever, but those people still need to be making making the laws making um sort of the policies because we need better we need better cohesiveness within our industry and yeah. that's what i'm hoping we gather from this whole experience you know we're all yeah. going through something traumatic together so if we can find ways to create more cohesiveness because we've all experienced something pretty terrible. That would be great, you know? For sure. Okay, so I'm going to tap into some of your expertise and experience here. Mm -hmm. Since you have a a storied career, I think it would be over 10 years, uh, 13 years now. So what what do you say to to younger therapists about longevity in in the career? How do you think about that? Well, first of all, I would say learn to use your feet. I mean, of course, because <laughs> that's where I'm coming from. Um, sure, for sure. Um, but I also think that it's really important to pace yourself. And, you know, one of the things I tell a lot of people in my business consulting is, um, you know, in the beginning, you may have to like work at Starbucks or something for a while or mm-hmm. like have a couple of different income 
streams. You know, if COVID has taught us anything, having a diverse income stream is probably really important. In yeah, Missouri. or almost just mandatory now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I think that that's really good advice for young therapists or, you know, fresh into the field. I also think that learning um, a niche is really important. Learning, um, you know, either the type of person you want to work with or the type of massage you want to do. You know, I think that the people who are kind of like come out of school and they're like, I can work with anybody and I can do anything. It's like, you're going to burn out, you know, like yeah. that's just what's going to happen. Um, so I think that having some kind of focus, maybe not even a niche, just a focus would be really good. You know, do you want to yeah. work with a doctor? Do you want to work with um, elderly? Having some sort of focus is going to be really good. Yeah. I've done a lot of reflection on what I really want my practice to become after this and sort of leaning more uh, towards just working against stress and anxiety and helping people just bliss out. And that's not always the most popular type of like massage to talk about, but it's just kind of like what I really like doing for people. So I'm kind of think I'm leaning more into that. And I, I also, I also am trying to drop 60 minutes from my, um, repertoire. I just, I really believe in nineties and a, that keeps fewer people coming and going, you know, well, it will, I it's not like I see that many people right now. So yeah. Yeah. It's just kind of reimagining how I do things here. Well, and I think, you know, something else that's coming to me with this, with the coronavirus and one thing I see as a really great opportunity is now is the time that we get to recreate our policies and our clients as a general rule should follow said policies because I, I agree with you that, um, you know, I like the longer sessions as well. And it was hard for me to get clients to, understand that because they were used to massage looking a certain way because of a spa or my other massage therapist or this chain or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, or this is the way, way a movie showed me what a massage was or whatever. So yeah. I think that we really have this open door right now to create some new expectations from clients. Um, you know, I've been listening to different people talk and, um, podcasts and whatever. And a lot of them are saying, you know, now we're going to start with phone, phone calls to do phone and or consultations, you know, and I kind of like that. I kind of mm -hmm. like that idea even before, because I don't want to work with the client. That's just like, I got this for my birthday and I got a gift certificate or whatever. They're not really invested in their health so much yeah. as like someone who's coming to me and I'm going to do a phone call consultation beforehand to really talk about like their health history, you know? So now there's, there is already that expectation that's starting to, to grow. So I think that as massage therapists, if we're being really mindful about what we know from the past and what we want to create in the future, we have a really great opportunity to create, um, new normals. Yeah. And, that could be really, really beneficial for everybody. Yeah, that's, that's well said. So if I could be selfish for a moment, what else be, beyond the, the niching idea, what, what else do you say to, to fledgling uh, massage therapists in, in their f first private practice? Is there any other, any other thoughts you would like to impart to me? I, you know, I've, this is my first private practice started in January and now kind of working through this situation and what are the things do you talk about? Well, I think that scaling is really important too. You know, I think a lot of massage therapists are told in school and this may or may not be the case for you, but I do see this a lot with massage therapists that, um, you know, you can do it. Like just start this wellness practice. It's cool. It's little overhead. Um, and I think that starting small and scaling appropriately is really important. And, um, I think that working with someone 
who knows what that looks like. I mean, I have always had a team of people supporting me in my business, not just my clients or like my partner, but like an accountant, an attorney, you know, that help me make these decisions when it's time to scale up or scale back or scale whatever way, you know? Um, and, and I think it's important to have people that you pay to do that because they're not going to be like your mom. That's like, Oh yeah, honey, you can do it. But like, you know, really looking at the facts and the numbers and the data to make sure that you're making choices that make sense. Yeah, that's good. And I also think something that people don't always talk about, and for me, this was my experience, so I would like to see more people talk about it, but it also involves your personal life. You know, I was married and I got divorced and um, that affects a business, you know, whether you want to believe that it will or won't, it totally does. So I think that scaling also involves what, is your personal plans. Do you plan to have more kids? Do you not plan to have more kids? Do mm-hmm. you want to move into a certain school district or, you know, do you want to move to a different state? Like you have to kind of plan your life a little bit. Um, yeah. And I think a lot of massage therapists are drawn to this field because there's a sense of like mobility. Um, but that's only sort of, <laughs> it's <laughs> only kind of. Yeah. Well, yeah. Some of that is an illusion. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. Interesting. Well, thanks so much for all of these thoughts about Missouri and massage therapy. I, I really appreciate your time and for being sure. on the Massage Hodge podcast. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we can chat for another minute after the recording, but to all the listeners, you can find the Massage Hodge podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all the places where you might encounter a podcast as far as I know. So (laughs) thanks for listening and we'll catch you next time.